So while you got your K-series uh, out of the chassis and disassembled, there's a couple pretty easy ways you can make improvements to this. So Ben's gonna do an overview of all the kind of simple tricks that you can do to um, improve the PCV flow, some of the little drainage ports, and um, some other areas of minor improvement. Yeah. So uh, yeah, these are largely like issues that help with drainage. Uh, some of them are on the outside of the engine, some are on the inside. Um, and then when you have these engines out, you can, uh, if, a lot of people are adding turbochargers or extra oil gauges and stuff like that. Uh, so instead of adding something like an oil filter sandwich plate, um, which can be kind of bulky, um, one thing you can do is drill into the oil galley right here. Um, it runs along where the factory oil pressure uh, uh, switch is. It, it goes about an uh, inch and a half, two inches into the block here. So you just need to drill the hole anywhere in line with that. And typically what I do is drill it for a 1 8 NPT um, fitting. Uh, that's the most common kind of fitting size you're gonna encounter for aftermarket gauges or just most oil oil related stuff in general. Um, and it also has the side benefit of resolving a bit of an issue where the factory uh, sensor is 1/8 BSP. Uh, it's a very similar thread. Uh, some people just jam 1/8 NPT in there, but it's not the proper way to do it. Uh, it's got a slightly different taper to 1 8 NPT as well as uh, one thread per inch different. They do jam into each other, but it's not very elegant. So Prone to leaks and also contributes to a common cracking of this uh, little oil port area? Yeah. Now the cracking is typically from people over-torquing. Just over-torquing the crap this, out of the uh, pressure sensor? Yeah, because it's, it's a tapered thread, which means that the tighter you make it, the more outward force that is exerting on the block and usually what happens is this this little area of the block cracks. I've had to repair a number of blocks. Um, not the cheapest thing in the world to do but sometimes depending on the vehicle is the best option. But yeah just make sure you do not over torque this or over torque these because they are a tapered thread and they the tighter you make them the more they more outward force they put on and more likely they are going to be to crack the block. Uh, so and then the, the next thing uh, we're going to go over is uh, one thing that happens with these case here is when you get leaks on like above the cylinder head um, there's a few places on the engine where oil or coolant can pool and it can be a pain in the butt to clean it out thoroughly. So one of the things we do is we drill a hole in the side here, uh, eliminates this uh, pocket to collect uh, coolant. You can see all the residue from stock configuration. Yeah. And then there's another one to do over here. From the factory, there is a drainage hole here, but it usually sits like at least of an eighth of an inch above uh, the surface. It's also not really at the lowest point of the that little pocket in there. So we uh, will grind that down with a die grinder. And then we also drill another hole in here. This is technically the lowest point. There's a little bit of a valley here. So we drill a hole through there. Uh, let's, let's the uh, fluid thoroughly escape. And then over here, uh, there's another one. So we, uh, we put another hole in there and uh, yeah, it's just a, just a place for unwanted fluids that may accumulate to escape. Instead of collecting and contributing to all this scum. Yeah, sometimes, like sometimes the fluid, it, it, if you can't clean it or don't clean it, it literally will sit there for weeks. If it's oil, it'll sit there indefinitely, cool and take ages to evaporate off those places typically. And uh, yeah, this just kind of, lets it drain off and you can hose it down with brake clean and it's just gonna run out of there rather than pile up. 
Uh, so the next thing is uh, there's a couple improvements we like to make to the PCB system. Um, so in here, um, this is a basically a, a catch can that's integrated into the block. It's a, actually a fairly clever design by Honda, but it's not perfect. Um, this hole here is a drainage hole. So any, any oil that's caught by the system uh, is designed to uh, pool down there and... Drain out into the timing cover? Yeah, it drains out into the timing cover area. And then this, the timing cover area has this uh, trap area. So crankcase gases can travel up here, out the, this drain hole, and uh, come out the, uh, the PCB uh, valve at the top of the, the water pump housing and, uh, and escape. The problem is, uh, the problem we've identified anyway is that this area, what's going to happen is it's going to pool up with oil because we have all the oil draining out of this hole. It's going to collect in here. There's no drainage hole uh, from the factory built into here. So uh, what we are going to do is on the other side of this, on the timing cover, there's a, a trap, trap area that matches it. And we're going to drill a hole into the bottom of the trap. So just like a, an eighth of an inch <clears throat> hole so the oil can uh, drain out of there. That way you have free, free flow for the crankcase gases to continue to travel out of here. And uh, that oil will return to the pan where it belongs properly. This is the back side of the timing cover from that block we were just looking at. And Ben's is gonna make the little modification to provide drain back from the integrated PCV passage. Uh, so not much to it. Yeah, so all, uh, all we do is uh, just take a cordless drill and a 1 8 drill bit. And we're just gonna drill a hole in the bottom here. You can do it in the block too, but it just makes more sense to do it in the uh, the timing cover. Because the timing cover is replaceable if you screw up. <laughs> yeah, much more easily replaceable. So, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty easy to do. That was about it. And again, the goal is, uh, you know, really just to provide a small passage for oil drain back and not so large that you're, you know, really changing the airflow dynamic through this passage. Still want the majority of air to go through the curved portion. Oh yeah, just deburring that little hole. And obviously everything's gonna get completely re-cleaned before assembly. Yeah, yeah. yeah make sure you thoroughly clean all the metal shavings you create out of here obviously but yeah that's about it for the uh the cover there's a little bit more work involved on modifying the housing and the uh existing pcv fitting and yeah. a little bit on the block as well actually so back on the block here um right there is the major passage for the crankcase gases it's coming um both from the head side and the crank side through this large kind of oil drain, which returns the oil from head to the oil pan. Um, and it's, it's quite large. Like the di diameter here is like, I want to say, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. Um, this small drain port over here is much smaller. It would provide a little bit of relief from timing cover side gases, but the main purpose is to, you know, the the oil that's collecting on these surfaces is draining to this low point. And this is gonna be draining that liquid back into the timing cover side. But as you can see, of course, uh, you know, just through the quickness of factory manufacturing, this isn't quite at the low point. So we're just simply gonna cut that with a carbide or you could use a sanding roll or something. Just to open it up to the low point and provide total drain back. So we got Ben here with the carbide in hand. Make sure you use your safety glasses. I don't recommend doing the safety squint when you're uh, doing anything. Doing these. Uh, but yeah, just be gentle.
And there you go. And again, just make sure you thoroughly clean all the uh, metal shavings you've created out of your engine. Looking at the uh, PCV passages on the back side of the water pump um, and kind of thermostat PCV coolant housing here, uh, they're very large, matching up with the passages on the block. Uh, so really, the only bottleneck or the very obvious bottleneck is going to be this hole down here, which leads out to the actual PCV check valve. And then, of course, the internal diameter of the PCV valve itself. So what we're going to do here to enable it to flow a hell of a lot better is bore out this hole and, you know, do a little bit of porting to match it to the internal diameter of an 8AN fitting, which will run to an external baffle catch can and then ultimately to the intake side of uh, a turbo to provide some vacuum on the crankcase. All right, so we got the K-Series water pump and PCV housing here. Um, it is a fairly good design, but there is uh, a bit of a restriction uh, built into it, especially when you're doing a turbocharged setup uh, where you need the extra crankcase ventilation. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to open this hole up. Uh, from the factory, it's about 5 sixteenths of an inch or 8 millimeters. Um, we're going to open it up to match the internal diameter or go a little bit bigger. Uh, from one of these dash eight uh, weld bungs. So we're gonna drill these holes out to uh, three eighths of an inch. That gets us about 20 to 30 thou bigger than, than the inside diameter of that dash eight fitting. So all you gotta do is get a three eighths drill bit on your drill and uh, you gotta drill it from the inside and the outside. The internal passage meets at a bit of an angle so you got to dr drill uh, the the one one side, and then drill the other side until the two passages uh, meet together, and then uh, yeah, so that'll drastically help improve uh, crankcase uh, gas ventilation out of here. You got to be careful uh, not to go too deep. It is. Given that it's aluminum, it is very easy to to drill into, and uh, you can't go too deep. Uh, you really you really have to go hard at it, but it's possible. side done and then uh, drill into this threaded hole where the uh, factory PCV valve would go and you just need to go until the two of them the new holes meet each other Yeah, it's hard to get a look down that little channel, but... Yeah, it's hard to see in there. But yeah, now the, the holes have kind of been... Uh, Hogged out a little bit. Yeah, opened up. And uh, yeah, they, they meet at probably a roughly a 30 degree angle to each other. So yeah, that'll... Uh, probably roughly double the amount of flow that can travel through this housing. So now we're going to move on to modifying the uh, PCV valve fitting. All right, so now we're going to go through the uh, modification process to uh, upgrade the PCV valve itself. What we're doing here is modifying it so that it uh, has the same internal diameter and no restrictions in regards in relation to this uh, dash eight uh, weld bung because uh yeah the inside diameter of that is quite small and uh, on top of that there's a ball valve in there restricting how much uh 
crankcase gases can travel through here. So we're gonna cut it apart and gut it uh, so we can weld this fitting on. So first step, we're gonna cut the whole barb off because we need to weld our uh, gas sheet bung on here. Second step, we're gonna flip it over and uh, cut the back off the threads, shortening it slightly, but uh, releasing the internals, so like the spring and the, the ball valve. Yeah, you can't just drill it out. Uh, we tried. Um, what happens is your drill bit starts to uh, contact the internals and the internals will just spin, stopping your drill bit from- Biting uh, into the material. Digging in and biting into anything. So you gotta, you gotta cut the end off of the, the bottom of this bolt and then the internals will come out. The spring and the little plunger, yeah. kind of ball plunger thing. Now we got a hollow fitting, but the ID of the very front kind of throw of that thing is still quite small. Yeah, so now we're just gonna put this thing over in the vise and uh, get a little more cutting fluid in there. And we will drill this out from this side. There you have it. So you, we got a uh, stock PCB valve hollowed out. Uh, from here, we're just gonna clean up the where the hose bar was, where we cut, zip this that, and clean up the uh, last thread here, uh, so that threads into the block properly. When you're cutting this off, um, cut it like a couple threads back from the end, not right at the end. You gotta make sure you cut it deep enough to get the. Uh, cap essentially off the bottom of the bolt to release the internals so yeah we're gonna gonna go through cleaning this stuff up now all right so i'm just gonna use this grinder here to clean up the, the surface here get rid of the, the burrs left over from drilling uh, flip it over do the same on the other side and uh when you're grabbing this in your vise just you don't have to grab it very hard you want to be careful not to damage the threads over here uh, and one of the most important parts of this step is uh, cleaning up threads on this side so that it threads back into this housing smoothly. That's kind of what you're looking for over here. Uh, we'll hit this with brake clean, but uh, in terms of getting uh, all the junk off, that's pretty much ready to go for welding. And then we'll do the same over here. So uh, you wanna, when you're cleaning up the edge of the threads here, you wanna kind of hold the grinding tool roughly at the angle of the thread. Um, you gotta kind of reshape the threads so they uh, thread into the hole properly. You can do all this with a file as well if you don't have any uh, air tools or anything. It's just uh, obviously going to be slower. And I've done quite a few thread cleanups, so it uh, goes pretty quick. A little test fit on the housing. Nice and smooth. So if it's uh, 
if it's really hard to turn by hand or you gotta get a tool on it, chances are you left a burr on the threads or a misshapen folded over burr or something like that. Uh, it is a little tricky to get a nice clean thread. Uh, I do have quite a few years of experience doing this, like I said, so um, don't be surprised if it takes you a little longer. If all else fails, you probably chase it with uh, the correct thread size and pitch die and yeah. make it fit as and well. Another thing you can do if you're having issues is if you have a triangle file, you can use a triangle file to uh, get into it. that thread. Yeah. yeah, get into the thread and deburr it. All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, welding the bung on here. All right, so uh, now we're gonna weld this dash eight bung onto the uh, PCV valve that we've uh, gutted out. Gonna TIG weld this on. Uh, you could potentially get away with MIG welding it if that's all you got. I find MIG welding often doesn't seal that well, especially when it comes to oil. It'll find its way through little, little nooks and crannies and it's never as solidly sealed as it looks like. So I'd recommend uh, TIG welding it if you have access to a TIG welding machine or have a friend or local business do it for you. So what we've done here is uh, got a drill bit that uh, matches the internal diameter of both of these things and uh, Jesse's just holding the drill bit in place while I get a couple tacks on it. That'll uh, help ensure that the uh, two pieces are located well in relation to each other. So I'm going to tack it and then we can remove the drill bit and uh, know that everything is where it belongs and then I can weld it out. We get a, at least a tap on each side. You get two taps on there, you can take the drill bit out. It's going to be pretty stable at this point. I'd recommend getting at least one or two more tacks on. There we go, we got her tacked up. Perfect alignment. So uh, when welding stuff like this, I like to hold it in the vise at a bit of an angle. It just uh, helps the weld lay in there a little nicer. Uh, you'll have to, uh, Keep rotating it as you go. And it, it's gonna get quite hot, so you're gonna wanna set a fire or something to do that with. And so both of these uh, fittings are mild steel. Uh, this is a bare mild steel. Uh, usually these pretty much all OEM fittings, bolts, etc., have a galvanized or zinc coating on them. So you'll want to do your best to uh, grind that off if you can, especially when TIG welding. TIG welding doesn't, doesn't love uh, welding through that stuff. Uh, and you'll get a much cleaner weld if you do that. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out here. And um, make sure, since these are mild steel, you, you do wanna use a mild steel filler rod. And since it is mild steel, you don't need to back purge it.
Uh, generally, you want to hold your uh, big torch over the, the weld area uh, until it cools off a bit. Uh, that way the shielding gas can uh, color, cover the area while it cools down, uh, minimizing oxidation. I just let the post flow do its thing. You can see it was still pretty hot. It uh, started to change color a bit there, but uh, I left it on there long enough to minimize the uh, oxidation that'll happen. And given that it's mild steel, uh, the oxidation does not affect its strength uh, too much, just like, uh, like it would with, uh, say, stainless steel or titanium. So now that it's uh, gone all the way around, we give it another zap. That just uh, lets my post flow run a little longer. I'll let the weld area cool down a little longer with some gas coverage. There we go. Hold it all the way around. Ready to go back on the PCV hosing. Make sure you put a uh, brush washer on there. Here's the finished product. After modifying that stock uh, PCV valve to match up with our opened up uh, PCV and water housing here. Ready to get a look. So made a real significant increase in the ability of this housing to flow those crankcase gases. So if this is something that you're looking to do yourself, but you don't have the ability to do TIG welding um, or access to the materials and things like that, we're thinking of producing a couple of these for people that need them. So drop a comment and let us know if this is something that people would be interested in. So the last thing I wanted to go over here for the crankcase breathing improvements is the valve cover. Uh, there's a few ways you can go about doing this. Um, my preferred way is to modify the existing uh, outlet on the valve cover. Some guys uh, like to weld bungs on the side of the valve cover here. Uh, in my opinion, that's not a very good way to vent the valve cover. It's, uh, it can cause some issues with uh, oil consumption or letting um, too much oil into your catch cans that, uh, that shouldn't go in there because that area of the valve cover is not baffled. You can modify it a certain way to make it so that's not an issue, but it is a decent amount of messing around. I'll show you why. So you can see this fitting here. It goes in through this channel into the factory baffle system. So that's in place to allow air to enter the baffle while having some traps in there that allow the oil to get separated and drain out. So when people put fittings on the side here, 
they end up having the fittings breathing from a part of the valve cover that's not baffled. Um, like I said, you can actually cut a hole in here and then you have to weld a tube that goes into the baffled area of the, the valve cover. And that's one way you can put the, um, the fittings on the side here, but it's quite a bit of extra work and I've yet to see anybody do it properly. Everybody does it the easy way and it's, it's not the best way. So what I did here is I, I put a dash 12 fitting on here just to get the extra um, cross-sectional area. Uh, that gives you pretty near the same area as two dash 10s. Um, and in my opinion, having the fitting there looks much cleaner. Um, and another thing I did to this valve cover, uh, it's fairly time consuming to do properly, but I, cause what I did is I, I drilled, I drilled this hole out bigger. The, the factory hole is not big enough to accommodate a dash 12 without being a restriction to it. So I, I drilled all of the, the rivets out that are retaining this baffle. And that doesn't take too long, it takes maybe five minutes. Uh, the problem is then you can't easily resecure the baffle. So what I, I ended up doing is drilling and tapping all of the holes where there was a rivet to an M8 by 1.25 so I could get bolts in there. Uh, that was a decent amount of work. It was like probably close to a couple hours of work. And a couple of the, the bolts, just because of where they're located, they do end up protruding through the, the valve cover. And you need to drill them all the way through so you can run the tap in and get it deep enough. Uh, all you gotta do to make it so this is not an issue is put some thread sealer on these bolts when they go in and uh, then you're good to go. But uh, after doing that, then you have a removable baffle. I wanted to remove the baffle because I, like I said, I did drill that hole out to be a larger inside diameter, which introduces a bunch of metal shavings in there. So I wanted to be able to clean that out and also make, make sure that there was no sand left in there from when this valve cover is powder coated. This is probably one of the most important modifications to do to your crankcase breather and to do it properly. So, um, yeah, make sure you handle that properly. So that concludes our overview of some simple modifications to the block and PCV system. Uh, if you're liking this case series content, uh, we're going to be putting out a lot more videos on fabrication, turbo systems, lots of case series stuff. We'll be doing some RB stuff, some BMW stuff. Um, so definitely like these videos and subscribe to the channel uh, to stay up to date as we're putting out new episodes and drop uh, comments on what you'd like to see. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep pushing forward with this.